everyone, I'm Christina Guerrero. And I'm Jimmy Rhodes. And we all know marketers have one goal in mind, to get your money. So you have to take the time to learn if what they're saying is actually true. And it's one thing when it's a promise to give you a lush lawn or shiny countertops, right? But when it's the food you feed yourself and your family, you want that info to be accurate and easy to find. But a recent study says that's not always the case. The problem with American food labels is our featured story at the top of the list. America, land of the free, home of the influencer, where we don't just solve problems, we obliterate them. He asked Americans to identify the healthiest cereal bar from a whole bunch of different packages and ranges and products. Jeremy King's the CEO of the consumer research firm Attest. So how did we Americans demolish your test? Only 9% of Americans could identify the healthiest option. Okay, but picking the second most helpful option is not bad. 13% when they tried to pick the healthiest option accidentally picked the least healthy option. So what's your point? America Americans are really bad at identifying which products are healthy and not healthy. We're running down why Americans stink at reading nutrition labels. The first problem, American packaging is an inverted mullet. The mullet's famous for being business in the front, party in the back. On packaging, the party's in the front. So in America, consumers are really seeing the front of the packaging where the labeling has keywords like whole grains or naturally flavored or just 100 calories. And you guessed it, it's all misleading. You might think this is a really healthy choice, even though it looks like a blueberry muffin or a piece of cheesecake. The bits of info that could help us make better choices? They're always on the back. Since the mid 80s in the US, that wonderful black and white nutritional information section contains a lot of very useful information. So in a country where people will text their wife in the kitchen from the couch, here's what we're asking people to do. See a product, pick that product up, turn that product over, and search for information that's contained in a table. The impact is that no one has a clue what they're doing. And if you try to read the ingredients, well, good luck, because sometimes the packaging hides that health info. Take the category from the study, cereal bars. Individual bars are wrapped in foil that's sealed lengthwise, creating a flap of labeling that's actively held down by the seals at either end. Yeah, so good luck reading the ingredients list hidden underneath that fold. And while you can't prove it, it sure feels like it's on purpose. It's never the barcode that helps retailers scan the product so that we can pay money that's underneath that fold, is it? But somehow, very consistently, the nutritional information is. Hard to read ingredients are a tell. When you have to work hard to get the information you're looking for to figure out if you're making a healthy choice, just raise a little red flag in your head. And here's the thing, America, it doesn't have to be this way. In Europe, there's a little label on the front writing guidance between letters A to E, where A is healthy and E is ridiculously unhealthy. Just a quick cross check. So while marketers in the States can put whole grains in big letters on the front of a label, that same thing in many markets outside the US would have a big sticker on the front that says, this is an unhealthy thing. All this deception has health costs, but the sad irony is that it's costing many manufacturers money too. People are willing to pay more for healthy products. So write a letter, make a phone call, or make an online comment to let marketers know. Americans want more information available. The problem with food labels is at the top of the list. People plaster stickers on water bottles, laptops, and car windows. Well now they're moving into the interior design world. Jackie Danker gives us a look at how stickers have become an easy and inexpensive way to jazz up your home. As kids, lots of us loved stickers, right? And now as an adult, they can bring you more joy too. Stickers are making a big impact in the design world right now and really providing so many bigger solutions to help bring additional design into your life. To learn how to up our interior design game with stickers, we turned to realtor and designer James Judge. Starting with sticker decals. For the longest time, we have seen pantry or laundry or different signage within home decor and home details, right? It's super charming. It helps to really signal what that space is used for. While cute signs are one thing, how can we customize with stickers? On Amazon, they sell these amazing decal stickers. Just peel and stick. At first you know, glance, this might sound a little tacky. However, the end result is so impressive and it looks like it's actually a custom door. Next up, frosted stickers for windows. If you have a view that you don't like, you can consider frosting it. Now, a lot of people think that this is really expensive because oftentimes it involves custom glass. 
but you can actually get a frosted sticker film to go right over the top of the glass. All you have to do is cut to size and stick it to the window. There's a small tool that will actually help to get any of the bubbles out. As for where to pick some up, I really recommend looking at Home Depot for these. They come in all different size rolls because rather than being a small sticker, this is almost like a sheet. Finally, we're talking tile stickers. This is my absolutely new favorite sticker in my life. Literally, I tried this on a fireplace recently and I was a little skeptical and instead I absolutely love it. On Amazon.com, I found a pack of stickers for $34. They're six by six stickers and I focused on applying them to a fireplace. But he says you can also use these as a kitchen backsplash. Peel, stick and enjoy. And it really creates an awesome visual impact. For more info, head to thelisttv.com. Learning how to use stickers to elevate our interior design. If your dream vacation includes horses and wide open spaces, then maybe it's time to wrangle up a way to hit the trail. Hattie D. Jamal showing us some of the best vacation ranches across America. Saddle up, because we're checking out vacation ranches across America. Our first stop is at Mountain Sky Guest Ranch in Emigrant, Montana. The history of Mountain Sky dates back to the 20s when people used to come to the ranch by train and then they would take a stagecoach up here to the ranch. And today... The Mountain Sky Guest Ranch is one of the top rated resorts in the country. Primary draw is horseback riding. Visitors can also try their hand at activities like whitewater rafting, golf, fly fishing, and hiking. You get into these big open meadows with wildflowers and it's really beautiful when you, when you get up into the mountains. You can head into Yellowstone National Park, which is just 30 scenic miles away. Being so close to Yellowstone, we do take horseback rides and hikes down there. It's like a summer camp for a whole family. Next, we're heading to Clark, Colorado, where we're checking in at Vista Verde Guest Ranch. The sky is bigger here. The mountains are obviously bigger here. The vastness of it makes you feel small in a really good way. Stay in a luxury log cabin at this all-inclusive resort when you visit with family or during an adult-only vacation. The biggest thing I, I hope for a guest to gain is to be able to be comfortable and confident and be able to understand that a relationship can be built between a horse and a human. And for the foodies, there are weekly cooking classes and wine tastings. There's something about this place that I don't think we're ever gonna find anywhere else. Our final stop is at Woodside Ranch in Mauston, Wisconsin. I feel like meeting people is really easy here. Guests can stay in rustic log cabins at the ranch house or at the lake house and visit the petting zoo daily. We are feeding some of the animals. The goats are really excited. The alpacas, not very much. This family-friendly ranch also welcomes kids with cancer through programs like Camp One Step. If you can come here, it's a must-have. And those are three vacation ranches across America. Here's what's coming up on the list. Easy ways to maintain healthy relationships. When we get connected with others, those healthy endorphins run through our system and we feel good. And revisit the musical legacy of Prince with Purple Rain. Before Purple Rain, we didn't really know much about Prince. Plus, help protect your pups from summer heat. You can get a cooling vest or a bandana that you can dip in water. That's all next on the list. Hey YouTube, okay, I know you're right in the middle of watching, but I just wanted to remind you to hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss one minute of the list. Okay, now back to the show. Welcome back. Keeping friends and loved ones close is an important key to happiness, but with our busy lives, it can be a balancing act. So we have tips to make sure our relationships stay happy and healthy. After a few years on Zoom, it's nice to reconnect in person. When we get connected with others, especially our loved ones, those healthy endorphins run through our system and we feel good. So it's important to maintain a healthy connection. We spoke to life coach Suzanne Sibilla to learn how. First, make time for a 10 minute talk out. We all lead very busy lives and are really crunched for time. Yet we have 10 minutes to spare to talk with a friend or a loved one. Talk about your concerns or your challenges and have them do the same without any opinions, no feedback 
or judgment, just talking. If you need to set an alarm, do so and talk away. And vent about your problems and challenges. It gets it out in the open so that we don't keep it inside ourselves. That is really a healthy thing to do. It helps us mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually as well. Next, connect over a walk and talk. Physical activity has proven to elevate our mood. So get outside, get together with a friend, a loved one, a neighbor or a coworker, and walk and talk about positive things. Talk about our wins and encourage each other, and then also compliment each other. And Suzanne says saying nice things to your friend will release feel-good hormones. We start to feel good about ourselves and the other person. Her third connection tip, hug a day. Go out, give a loved one, a friend, a hug a day. Make that a priority and you'll find that your life will be so much better. You'll feel real positive about it and so upbeat. And if the other person doesn't want to hug, smile. It does the same thing. Finally, put a fun Friday on the calendar. Schedule one to two hours a week. And get together for something that lights you up. It helps us to look forward to a Friday. Like, oh gosh, I've got this Friday to look forward to. I'm going to get together with my friend. We're going to go out and get a massage. We're going to go for a walk. We're going to get something healthy to eat. We're strengthening our relationships with healthy connection tips. The tech world is buzzing with talk about Facebook's metaverse an immersive experience that will mimic real life interaction. While the tech is still evolving, Teresa Strasser is showing us some impressive ways virtual reality is being used right now. Hey, Teresa. Thank you. From leisure to healthcare to education, here are just a few ways virtual reality is being used to enhance people's experiences. Coming in at number one, virtual reality travel. I get a pretty detailed look of what this city looks like while I am there. 360 degree YouTube videos along with a VR headset can give you virtual travel experiences at home but VR arcades are popping up everywhere and offer things like virtually flying around the world for about 30 bucks. If you want to be in Paris, you can. You want to walk into the Hungarian parliament, you can. Pretty much the whole entire world is open for you. A new report from the National Research Group found only 13% of U.S. households have some type of VR headset, but that number may be growing. A lot of people have been looking to virtual reality as a way to see other places, other cultures from the safety and comfort of their own homes. At number two, virtual reality is being used to improve people's mental health. You can still do the two things by looking through the goggles and seeing another world. Mind VR works with hundreds of senior living communities across the country using their virtual reality goggles to curb the adverse effects of social isolation. Creating shareable experiences and improving relationships. And seniors who are living out their golden years at home can also use Mind VR's headset, which costs around 600 bucks at mindvr.com. We've essentially reimagined VR away from this youth-based gaming culture to a very safe, secure, and senior-friendly platform. And our third virtual reality trend, VR and education. Many colleges across the country are using virtual reality to teach various subjects, including training medical students in life-saving procedures. So what this virtual simulation enables us to do is put students into situations that would otherwise be out of reach. And educational VR is projected to become a $700 million industry by 2025 up to thousands of students now involved. And those were three popular virtual reality trends to look out for. Lots more to come on the list. Stay with us. It's your life, it's your list. We're celebrating Pride Month. Go to listtv.com to learn more. Welcome back. June is African American Music Appreciation Month. So to celebrate, Hattie Dijamal is checking out movies about some of the most renowned black musicians whose music changed our world. They're on the hot list. As Black Music Month comes to a close, it's a good time to celebrate the accomplishments of inspiring American figures of color. It gives people an opportunity to see that a person is not just one dimensional, but there's so many facets that make a person who they are. 
You're lying. You can tell just by your reaction, you're lying. Talking about some of her favorite movies and series about these amazing artists that can be watched for free this summer on the Over the Air Network Bounce is the Vice President of Programming, Don Douglas, starting with the movie Purple Rain. Before Purple Rain, we didn't really know much about Prince. Do you see something you like? It was loosely based on his life, what he was dealing with, and the kind of genius that was built, even in spite of some of the tragedy that was going on with his home life. Held by the LA Times as one of the greatest musical films, this movie was added to the Library of Congress for preservation by the United States National Film Registry in 2019. This movie actually showed the dimensions that made Prince who he was. That's nice. Up next, the miniseries, The Jacksons, in American Dream. When you look at the biopic, you see how his father, a steel mill worker from Gary, Indiana, had a dream. He had a vision for his family, and he created stars. I don't know how many times I can go through this. Well, it could be worse. Like what? Like not getting recognized at all. The Emmy-winning series became one of the most popular and successful music biography miniseries of the 1990s. The Jacksons are more than a musical group. The Jacksons are family. And finally, the hit movie, Ray. What you say? Jamie Foxx did an incredible job of portraying Ray Charles in this movie. I might be blind, but I ain't stupid. It's just an, an incredible movie. Fox won all five major lead actor awards, including an Academy Award, Golden Globe, BAFTA, Screen Actors Guild, and Critics' Choice for his performance in this movie. Georgia, the whole day through, the whole day. just an old sweet song. On my mind. Movies celebrating African American artists on the hot list. Next, summer's coming, and we have ways to make sure your dog doesn't get hammered by the heat. That's coming up. Want more mouth watering recipes? Absolutely delicious. How about the latest fitness trends? It can help calm us, improve our mood. Financial tips? People who budget will succeed. Go to thelisttv.com and get uninterrupted access to great lifestyle trends, tips, and helpful hints. All at your fingertips. You've got something that looks a little bit more unique. Get what's new, what's now, and what's next. Thelisttv.com. Welcome back. Tomorrow is the first day of summer, and while we all love hanging out in the warm weather, it's easy to lose track of how the heat is affecting our pets. So we have tips to help your pup beat the heat. When the weather's warm, we love to take our favorite adventure buddies out for a walk. But what may be comfortable to us... It can be extremely hot outside for your dog. Kimberly Vermillion, Director of Marketing and Communications for the Arizona Animal Welfare League, has some ways for us to spot if our pups are too hot and how to prevent it. For starters, keep an eye out for HRI, or heat-related illness. Does it all come at once, or is it a progression? No, it's definitely a progression. That excessive panting, if they seem lethargic. Telltale signs that could result in heat exhaustion are... They might be a little uncoordinated. They might be vomiting. Check to see if their nose, mouth, and gums are dry. As those symptoms progress, you really want to be careful because they can get dangerous. Next, protect your pup. As soon as you start seeing those warmer temperatures, even at like 75 degrees with normal humidity, that can really impact your dog and you just want to be mindful of the time of days that you're bringing them out. So avoid the early to mid afternoon when it's the hottest. Do they feel humidity the same way we do? They do. So even that 75 degree day might feel amazing for us, but with that humidity when it adds on, it, you know, it's really can be quite warm for your dog. Do you have to think about the kind of dog and the kind of coat that they have? Not only do you want to keep in mind their fur coat, but you also want to keep in mind their age, their size. And the smaller and shorter they are, the more intense the heat that bounces up from the ground. Should I be packing water to take with me? Definitely. A good rule of thumb is one to one. So for every pound your dog weighs, that's an ounce of water that you need to make sure that they're getting. Keep extra water and a portable collapsible water bowl with you. And if you see signs of your dog overheating, rub water on her paws and ears. You can get a cooling vest or a bandana that you can dip in water and put on them, so that can kind of help regulate their temperature. 
finally, get your dog in summer shape. When I get that first nice day, I want to go on a 10 mile hike. Can the dog come with? If your dog has not taken a 10 mile hike before, you really want to be cautious that you're easing them into that. Start small and take walks around the neighborhood first. And then ease them into maybe a smaller hike and then kind of go from there. What about when I see people giving dogs their summer cut? It does help a little bit because they don't have that extra heat, but also keep in mind that they still have a lot of fur. Staying cool for the dog days of summer. KG, I love doing that story. And by the way, all those dogs were rescue dogs available to your rescues, and they were especially grateful for the extra attention. Well, rescue dogs definitely have the biggest hearts and greatest gratitude. Absolutely. Love those guys. YouTube, you made it all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Don't forget to like this video, leave us a comment down here below, and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a list. And right over here, more episodes. Keep it going. You can do it.